Hey guys, this is Katie here with Life of the Mundane and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you guys 10 fun educational activities you can do outside with your kids that will require either items you already have around your home or little to nothing extra. So let's get started. Take your chalk and hit the sidewalk with your schoolwork. Anything that you need to do for review, whether you're still doing school during the summer as a homeschooler or whether you're just trying to keep the things fresh in your kids' minds, take it outside. Make a multiplication hopscotch and have your kids go through and as they jump on the two numbers, talk about how they multiply and when they land on the third number, have them solve the problem. This is so much fun to do with your kids and a great way to get them to think outside the box. You can also do this with preschoolers or younger age kids by taking and writing letters all over your sidewalk and have yelling out um, a different letter or having them spell out their name and they have to jump from letter to letter, spell out their name to have them jump on colors or to make patterns with their chalk. You can also do this, I've seen on Facebook, great ideas of doing this with diagramming sentences on the sidewalk. Anything is more fun when you take it outside and when you add a little chalk to it. Tip number two, nature journaling. I know we've talked about this a little bit before on my channel, but I cannot emphasize enough how easy it is to do nature journaling. When you get out of your mind the necessity of how complicated it has to be and you just enjoy the process. All right, all you need to do is get your kids a notebook similar to one of these at Walmart. They run from two to four dollars depending on your store. You can grab one for your kids and just have them go outside. Set a timer and tell them that they need to just go out in nature wherever they want to go, the backyard, the front yard, up in a tree. They can um, watch and observe an animal or look at a flower or a plant, but they're going to take that 15 minute period and they're just going to observe and watch and sketch and write down the things that come to their mind. It might be some poems poetry that comes to their mind. It might be writing down their observations of what they're looking at, sketching or drawing pictures of things they see around them. But this is a great way for them to engage and really take time to focus in on the little things in life that they might normally be missing. And you'll be surprised at how much fun it gets and how they enjoy looking back at that and seeing the patterns during the season. Tip number three is take family walks. Now that might sound like a duh, or you might be wondering how is that educational? But let me tell you the beauty of family walks. Have you ever noticed how many things you can learn on family walks? If you have little, little ones, you can work on vocabulary, pointing out trees or animals, pointing out different colors that you see, working on numbers. Oh look, here's one, two, three mailboxes, that kind of thing. If you have older kids, you can start working on things like left and right. Let your kids get ahead of you a little bit and tell them, all right, at the next turn, we're gonna turn left and let them figure out which way that is. And you can work on map reading and compass skills as you go through the different areas, whether that's hiking or going through your neighborhood and have your kids map out a route and then follow that map. This can be a great way to add a little bit more spice and excitement to your typical daily family walk and still take the opportunity to learn. Tip number four is to take the time to play some of those PE type games, those organized games and activities that we played as kids in school. Take those opportunities to play them with your kids. I know as a homeschooler, I can be guilty of the fact of sending my kids out to play um, and just letting them explore, which is amazing and so, so good for them. But sometimes we forget that this is also a great opportunity to teach them some of those games. It helps teach teamwork. It helps work on physical fitness skills, and it gives them something fun to do with their friends in the future. So take the time, play Red Rover, play dodgeball, introduce your kids to Foursquare and other games like that. I'll drop a bunch of links down to games that you can play outdoors down below using just simple things like having a ball, maybe having some cones to do um, obstacle courses. If you don't have the recreation cones or things like that, don't be afraid to use a rock or a shoe or some other random object in your home. You can make these things out of typical everyday things you have in your home and have a lot of fun doing it. Number five, doing art outside. It is such a perfect solution to a horrible problem. See, I have a problem with art. I appreciate it. My kids are very, very good at it, but I don't like mess. I don't know about you guys, but I just don't like it. So I have found that by letting my kids take their art and their creativity and their mess outside, it makes mommy happy and they get the freedom to spend hours or minutes, no matter how long, creating things slash destroying them and recreating them again, whatever that looks like for your family. So have them take the finger paints outside 
let them play with their slime outside. Take it all outside and let them create and have hands-on fun, but do it in the great outdoors. Number six, reading. Reading is another great activity to take outside. And it is amazing when you have a reader that is struggling or who is maybe a reluctant reader, um, just doesn't like to have be either read out loud to or reading themselves. Taking it outside can add a whole element of fun. Teaching your kids to find their own little private reading nook outside, climbing a tree to read, or simply sitting a picnic blanket out on the ground and reading with mom can be great ways to make it more fun and engaging and to get that outside time in it as well. Number seven, gardening is a great thing to do with your kids. This is a fantastic learning opportunity. It's science. There's planning involved. You can make your kids involved as little or as much as you want, depending on their age and their ability. Have them help you plan the garden. Have you help them have them help you purchase the seeds and pick them out. Plot the land. Get it ready. If you're doing raised garden beds, have them help you build those beds. All of those things can be great ways to do it. But guess what? Even if you don't, maybe you're in an apartment complex or you don't really have a desire to have a big garden, simply plant a few flowers with your kids in a little pot. This is a great opportunity for them to watch it grow, to have patience and perseverance as they water and take care of and watch after this plant. Number eight, build something. This has been a lot of fun, but something I often struggle with remembering to do. Having your kids have the opportunity to build something, even if it's just with scrap woods laying around the house, whether it's a plan that they execute and um, deliver whatever it is that you guys have decided on, or whether it's just letting them just sort of tinker around in the garage, let them use a screwdriver, let them use a hammer, obviously with adult supervision and instruction, but let them create something with their hands. It will go such a long way and it's off an awesome memory builder. That brings us to number nine. Another one that's fun is to work on survival skills. Okay, this doesn't have to be like full on Bear grills, eating shrubs and, and different bugs, okay? But you can work on things like helping your kids understand the need for food, water, shelter, and working through maybe one time a week of talking through different ways you could do that. Giving your kids a tarp and saying, okay, I want you guys to go build a shelter in the backyard and they're gonna have to figure out how to attach it to something and how they can maybe use branches to hold it up and things like that. Give them different challenges like that and it would be a great opportunity for them to learn life skills and also have a lot of fun. Finally, number 10, water toys. Okay, this one might be a little obvious because I realized that a lot of people think about water toys when we're talking about outside, but there are fun ways to use it in an educational way. I've seen on Facebook some really fun ideas, some friends that wrote different math problems or sight words on their fence with chalk. And they had their kids go up and they had, you know, they might call out a question and they would have to shoot the right answer or the right word with a water gun. How fun is that? Having them do tag team Bible verses with an egg toss concept, only a water balloon. So have them stand really close together as they've already practiced working on a memory verse and have them say every other word. And they're gonna throw the balloon for every time they say the word. So I hope that's been helpful to give you a few ideas of how you might get outside this summer, but still keep the education and the fun alive. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like videos like this on homeschooling, home management, parenting, and everything in between. And click the little bell notification to be notified of new videos. And we'll see you next time, bye.